Hi. Um, this is, I guess, maybe part of the entrepreneurial series. I guess we'll put it in there. I got a call from a client of mine last night, uh, and she's one of those people that makes money. She does a good job at it. Um, lives a real comfortable life, travels, and uh, has made some investments recently that didn't work out. And about a month ago, went uh, to another investment meeting and came out of the meeting and she said that she was in a fog and she's been in fear and she just needed to talk. And so we talked and we looked at the emotional worlds that she was in and there was conflict. Uh, I know this conflict because immediately when I said hello, she said, it's great to hear your voice and she started crying. So where we are in my charts is four below my charts, Martin's chart, um, and uh, sadness, conflict, uh, you can pretty much map out where a person is. As we talked, what had happened was, and she had it all, it was all rational. It was all, this is what happened, this is how it happened, this is when it happened. And uh, she got overcome by the world of the mind. That little voice that talks to you that never says anything good, that is reptilian by nature. And what my sister says when you get down is in there is you connect the dots. And... Uh, she had connected the dots, this client of mine, had connected the dots all the way to where she and her family were homeless. <laughs> she lives in a great home overlooking a golf course on the seaside of England. And I have met very few people who have had the capacity just to make money. And uh, she loves to do things that other people wouldn't do. Uh, just to see if she can do it or not, and uh, is admired by a lot of people. But this one meeting, she had to put her life down on paper, black and white. This is how it is. And when she walked out of the meeting, uh, she said she walked into this fear-filled fog. And when you're in a foggy area, you can pretty much be aware that you're in your mind, but a lot of times you're not aware and she asked to call, asked me to call her because she said, I can see no way out of this. I've been here for a month. And so we just talked for a while. And, I, and as she talked, I said, okay, here you are in alienation. Here you are in quitting. Here you are down. And she said, here's where I made agreement with the person. And the agreements are just mind-made things where people say this and you say, oh, yes, that's so. And you don't know whether it's so or not, but you agree with them. And it becomes not a reality, but an illusional reality. Uh, and I laughed at her, of course, uh, because it's easy to sit when somebody else is in their mind and they've called you for guidance to sit outside and see where they are. If my classes have value, one of the greatest values is to see where you are in the world. And when you don't know what to do, call somebody. Call somebody that you trust. Call somebody that can look at you and say, okay, man, look at here's where you are, here we are. And then it goes, that goes to my book, Noticing Fixes More Than Fixing. She was in all these emotional states, what I call below the line, and all her mind kept doing, that little voice kept doing, was connecting to dot, the dots to lower and lower states or more complicated states. Now, it's got to be maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago. I was working with my mentor, Martin Sage, and we were working in Austin, and it was a great time. And he generated a lot of clients, uh, had a lot of people to train. I was continuously training, and uh, we were wa walking on his ranch one day. And I said to him, uh, the happier you get, does your mind get more powerful? Because it seemed like at times, you know, there's that always, oh, wait for the other shoe to drop. And you get this kind of fear-filled thing that's nebulous, but it's just the mind. It's just the mind. False evidence appearing real is, you know, an acronym that doesn't exist. But it, it, uh, the mind does that. And he said, no, no. He said, the happier you get, the more insidious your mind gets. And I thought, oh, shit. You know, I, you know, powerful, if it hits you with a stick and all of a sudden you're in this unexplainable fear... But it doesn't. It sneaks up on you, and it does things, and it, and it makes things seem concrete and real. And if you put it down on paper, then that proves it. And if you just notice the states, and sometimes the states are worth relishing. Again, there's nothing wrong with those states, except 
that they are relatively inefficient a lot of the time. But when my friend uh, Raph was passing away, I was in sadness a lot of the time. And that's when I did my first video, which was, uh, I don't know, Sadness, oh, I forgot the name of it. But it, it was talking about how much I appreciated the sadness, how much, how happy I was to have known him and loved him. And, uh, and I would not want to have such a strong emotional state that I wouldn't experience these really, really powerful emotional states. So if you have a coach, it's worthwhile to call them when you get into a state that you don't understand and your mind starts connecting the dots and making up all this stuff that's really not real. www.micpeakperformance.com